Stop! You violated the law. This video is a continuation of the IELTS tier list part one. If you have not seen that one, I highly suggest you check it out before watching this one. And that's all I wanted to say about that. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, it's me, Queen Hunter here. And today we're going to cover part two of the IELTS tier list, including herbivores and omnivores. Let's just dive right on into it. First up, we have Ankylosaurus. Now I'm going to need you to do me a favor. I want you to take a good long look at this design. Okay, you looked at it. All right. Now, I need you to tell me what you think, and if you don't like it, I need you to go out onto your street and kiss oncoming traffic. This is a perfect representation of speculative paleontology going absolutely off the fucking rails while still maintaining the essence of Ankylosaurus. If you haven't already seen my Ankylosaurus video, I suggest you check it out, but to keep it short, I'm a huge fan of the Indian rhinoceros armor style that they went with. I think this Ankylosaurus looks very unique, and I'm honestly very excited to have it in the game. I'll admit that its playstyle isn't fully my thing, it, it's the whole big hunk of meat just kind of slowly chugging around the map. It's very niche and I recognize that entirely. Some people are going to like it a lot more. It's just not my thing. But because I really want to piss off Anki haters because I know that this guy gets his, his fair share of flack from people in the community, I'm going to go ahead and put him in A tier. Cry about it. Next up is Apatosaurus. I don't have much to say since we have no concept art and basically this one character model, which looks cool, I guess. I, I dig the lateral neck spikes. In my opinion, it would be better for larger carnivores such as Giga or Acrocanthosaurus to take down in pairs. It's also really good for aesthetics, but once again, due to the lack of info and because there's no concept art to speak of, I'm gonna go ahead and put it in rating pending. I know Ava is an IO classic and I appreciate the admittedly unexpected twist of making it an omnivore, but, and this is gonna be controversial, I think it's just a worse protocell. Ceratops. Burrow stealing is cool, I guess, but if you can't find one, your defenses against larger carnivores are pretty limited. Character model wise, it's pretty mid. I have no choice but to put it in C tier. I just prefer Protoceratops so much more. It, it's it's not even like a contest. Vapiosaurus is interesting because of the sheer amount of effort that was put into its mechanics, despite it not having a very large impact on its surrounding environment like at all. I think the underwater foraging and gaining oxygen from breaching are very good mechanics that encourage the players to behave as the developers intended. It's a great implementation and it shows that the developers really care about making every animal feel unique and interesting even if his presence isn't entirely game-changing. Besides, it's just a fun playable. I have a lot of fun when I play Baby. What more do you need, really? I would love to put it in A tier, but I'm gonna keep it in B just because the, it still stands that it, it really doesn't affect anything all that much, nor does it interact with many other creatures. Brachiosaurus. This long-necked behemoth should just be made AI. Brachy as a playable, I feel, just wouldn't work. At least not as well as Camarasaurus or even Apatosaurus, if I'm being honest. It's way too slow to get anywhere reliably, and I struggle to think of ways to make its gameplay engaging. You could make an argument that if Porctosaurus worked, then Brachiosaurus would also, but Evrima is such a vastly different game than Legacy, and that translation would not come without a few bumps in the road. It would be really cool if it was such an imposing AI that it transcends just being another dinosaur and is instead a sort of beacon to tiny tiers who could scale on top of it to hitch a ride, get away from danger, or even pick bugs off of its back. Like, do, do you have any idea how immersive that would be? Until then, I'm gonna keep it in rating pending. Again, we hardly know anything about it. For all I know, it will just be AI. Camarasaurus. Definitely an upgrade from Bracky. Uh, its design is awesome. It reminds me of an enormous alligator snapping turtle. And playstyle wise, it would definitely be more interesting than most other sauropods due to sparring and things of that nature. But it's still a sauropod, and this playstyle just isn't for me. This is obviously very subjective, and I may get some flack from the Care Bear Portosaurus players, but it's my tier list. If you got a problem, go make your own. C tier. At this point, I'm starting to lose my already styrofoam grip on my sanity, and honestly, I don't think the effort to maintain it is worth it. Corythosaurus. Seeing as how we literally don't know a thing about this one yet, and we have Maya and Parasaurolophus, I don't think there's any place in the roster for Cory unless it's some sort of skin variant of Parasaurolophus. I'll, I'll hold off on it for now because of the lack of information. It's going in rating pending. Dinochirus. For those of you who have been around since day one, for, for you OG watchers, since that first video I made all those months ago with my most anticipated creatures, y'all already know how I feel about this guy. It is another example of the Isle at its absolute best, a gorgeous beast that props up its strength and, and puts them on display for everybody to behold in primal, terrifying glory. Its design is fucking amazing. As for its playstyle, it's an omnivorous swamp dweller that is the dinosaurification of fuck around and find out. Immediate S tier. Diabloceratops. Holy shit, it finally happened. 
I'm slower than the aisle. As you probably already guessed by now, Diablo Ceratops officially released to the Horde test in the middle of making this video. Now, I don't know if that's a really good sign for the devs or a really, really bad sign for me, but I'm just going to go over it really quickly because I have not had a chance to properly test out the sparring as a result of two consecutive 12 hour shifts at the hospital. To keep it brief, I think Diablo Ceratops is a very important animal that transcends just being another dinosaur as it's the official introduction of sparring into the game, which according to the developers themselves is the last big mechanic that's been halting progression on other playables. Based on the videos that I've seen so far, it still needs a bit of work and tweaking done as with most things in the game, but once it's finalized we can hopefully expect faster production times for future playables. Setting aside all that technical mumbo jumbo from the short amount of time that I have played Diablo, I think it's very enjoyable when you're not getting cannibalized by your own species. In time this issue will solve itself since everybody is touching on Diablo right now. Pause. It's about time that we received another big herbivore that'll actually have an effect on its surroundings. The animation work is great, the audio design is impeccable as always, and as of right now for what it is, it seems fairly balanced. Sure, it's huge and can gore pretty much anything in a few seconds, but its turn radius is complete garbage, and its atrocious bleed resist makes it very susceptible to things such as Omni. I'm personally very happy with its inclusion right now, and I can't wait to see how it adapts to Gateway. A tier. Diplodocus. To be honest, I don't even... I... <laughs> To be honest, I don't even know if this guy is still going to be added, but refer to my opinion for a Patasaurus. The Mythical Dryosaurus. This makes me sad, but I'm going to have to put this thing in C tier for now. It doesn't have burrowing yet due to it just not being finished, and apart from that, its gameplay is unfortunately very shallow, despite how cute it is. Its color patterns are kind of ass too, I wish we had a lot more variety in our options. There is an unknown car parked in my driveway. Am I in danger? Gallimimus. It has a very safe and easy design in my opinion. It, it is just sequestered from Jurassic Park. And while that isn't exactly a bad thing, with something like Gallimimus you could have been much more creative, like you know, feathers. But I don't know, I like its playstyle, I think it's safe enough even though even if it does get a little bit boring after a while. And I like that it can take a hit or two instead of just being complete fodder. Its speed boost mechanic is pretty nifty as well, um, it's it's a good example of like a video gamification that I wish to see implemented a little bit more. Plus the feeling of speeding down a grassland as a group of galleys is like, it, it feels nice, I like it. It's going in B tier. Homolocephaly. Look, as much as I love tiny tiers, I think time spent on this dino would just be much better spent on something else. It's a baby Pachycephalosaurus. It would have a great role on like a micro ecosystem server where the biggest carnivores would be like Omniraptors or something, but that's about it. Burrowing is cool, but it just, I don't know, it, it, it isn't enough in this case. It is adorable though, and that's the only thing saving it from F tier. I'll put it in D. Hypsilophodon. Similar to Dryo, it makes me sad that it's incomplete because its design is perfection. It's amazing. They, they took a dinosaur that is actually fucking disgusting in every interpretation that I've seen from it, and they made it into something genuinely super eye-catching and interesting to look at. Once they introduce Climbing for it, I will definitely be running around as it more often, but until then, I'm gonna put it in C tier. I also think its stomach acid mechanic is pretty cool as well. Kentrosaurus. Much like several other dinos on this list, I have quite the bias with Kentro because it's such a cool looking dinosaur even outside of the game. Its character model is beautiful, and I love how armed to the teeth and tail it is despite being on the smaller side of the roster. It seems like its gameplay is going to be very porcupine-like, as is suggested by the concept art, and I like that a lot. I am all here for it. A tier. Magyarosaurus. This playable is silly, and while I don't completely hate its design and think it is unique enough, except for its front legs, I don't think its execution will be good. Its meat is supposed to be inedible to most carnivores, and that's supposed to discourage people from killing it. But listen, I am a seasoned veteran, all right? I've been playing the aisle for years now, and I've had people kill me for fucking sport. They don't even eat my body afterwards. They just leave me there to rot, like a like the Apatosaurus in Jurassic World. If you don't think that that same logic is gonna be applied to this thing, I beg you to go to a neurologist, you have brain damage. Regardless, I guess it'll be cool to play as a smaller sauropod. I don't know, this one's hard for me to rank. Look, I'm gonna be completely honest with you guys. I have it written here in my outline that I was gonna put it in C tier, but now that I actually think about it, that that's too good. It's going in, in D tier. I'll give it the benefit of the doubt. That's the only thing keeping it out of F tier because I don't know, maybe it'll surprise me like, like, a, like a pipe bomb in the mail. Maya Sora. I consider Maya a very important dinosaur, similar to Diablo, because while its mechanics and stuff isn't going to be anything game-breaking or groundbreaking, it's going to be the first hadrosaur in the game, and one of the most popular mid-tiers. If Dibble are the cows of the isle, then Maya are definitely the horses. I expect them to hold their own pretty well, and I just really like its design and animations. Kiss and Kitten did an incredible job, as usual, and I can't wait for its release. 
A tier. Minmi. Immediate S tier. I've already talked about Minmi in the past and how important it is to have a generalist animal. Oh, but it does too much. It's not gonna be fun to play if it'll just get away from anything. Cease existing, I beg of you. Crawl into a hole and stay there forever. I have always thought that it's better safe than sorry playstyle works perfectly as a tutorial creature for someone who may not yet be super familiar with the game, as the isle's learning curve resembles that of a fucking parabola. It's absolutely adorable as well, its design is peak. I love the idea of a notosword such as itself grazing underwater and walking like a hippo similar to Anki. No, it doesn't swim, you irredeemable <laughs> Melissa McCarthy looking at or Dromius. Just make it AI, dude. Pachycephalosaurus. Its design is completely serviceable, but its playstyle doesn't really provide anything interesting in particular besides mindlessly killing everything that it sees. There's a there, there's a special irony that lies in the animal that hits everything with its head being played by the dumbest, most brain dead people in the community. I do really like the fact that it knocks coconuts out of trees because of the precedent that it sets for ways of herbivores obtaining food in more interesting ways. That's about as far as it goes for me. It's a solid playable, but I find myself routinely forgetting that it even exists in the current roster. It's going in F tier. If this is your main, I hope your entire house runs out of toilet paper the next time you have massive, just explosive diarrhea. Pachyrhinosaurus, another Ceratopsian. This one has the potential of being cool, and I don't hate the model even though it's incredibly outdated, but because there isn't any concept art or any other information that I know of, I'll, I'm, I'm just gonna put it in rating pending. Parasaurolophus. I love Hadrosaurus, and Para is no exception. Being basically a pseudo apex, its size alone is already enough to deter most mid and small tiers, and then of course there's the scream ability, which the concept art suggests will be able to temporarily stun animals as big as Allosaurus. And before I get the fun police in the comments again this is actually something that is seen in nature as pistol shrimp use pressurized sound to stun and kill their prey of course water is a much different medium than air but you get the basic idea of it it's a game however something about its design just doesn't convince me entirely i don't know if it's something of the way of the way that's back is built for what it is it's not bad it's actually quite good by parasaurolophus standards i'll put it in beats here for now platyosaurus Rating pending. I don't care much for this guy at all. It's definitely a unique addition, I'll give it that, but we don't really know much about it except for that its face is my sleep paralysis demon. Protoceratops. Not only is the design and pattern of this thing absolutely stunning, but it seems like it's going to be quite tanky and scrappy despite its small stature. Proto is genuinely just Avaceratops, but better in almost every single way except for like weight. That point goes to Ava because Ava is supposed to weigh like 660 kilograms, I think, something something around there. And Protoceratops uh, will weigh about 145 kilograms. I'm going based off of the chart that you currently see on screen. Don't at me. Its concept art also suggests that its bite is going to be quite the problem for unlucky raptors and other small tiers and it'll be able to properly live on the beach due to its ability to drink salt water, which while it is out of left field completely, I kind of like it since there will actually be something to populate the beaches around Gateway. For me, this guy is an A tier, like no question. It's actually, and if it's actually really fun, as fun as I expect it to be on release, I'll probably move it up to S tier. Satakosaurus is a multidimensional Lovecraftian horror that has been observed swimming through the ether on the outskirts of the known universe consuming entire galaxies and emitting blasts of radiation that are occasionally picked up by our human satellites and some radios. When these transmissions are translated into sound, this is what we hear. I'm over here stroking my dick. I got lotion on my dick right now. I'm just stroking my shit. It is so big, it is believed that the Helix Nebula, otherwise known as the Eye of God, is actually its butthole. Due to its galactic scale of power, it solos the entire roster 10 billion times over. S tier. Shantungasaurus, auto S tier, holy shit. Design, flawless. I genuinely could not try and pick apart the way that this thing looks even if I tried. It is the largest hadrosaur in history. Look, just, just look at this. Look at it. It's, those are fully grown tenos. And then there's this absolute masterpiece of an image which could not encapsulate my thoughts on Albertosaurus more perfectly. I live for this kind of slander. I love everything about this dinosaur and even though it'll be an absolute bitch and a half to grow, It'll be worth it. Stegosaurus. Stego in the Isle is a great Stego. That's pretty much the extent of my praise because I think it's good. I like the way its character model looks and I think its playstyle, while again, not for me, is perfectly serviceable. The only reason it feels like an absolute god right now is because nothing can really counter it, but once Rex and other large carnivores are introduced, it'll no longer be the all-powerful, omnipotent being that everyone thinks it is. But again, its gameplay loop just doesn't convince me. It's going into B tier. 
Styracosaurus. I'll skip the explanation since there isn't really much I can say about Styraco. It's one of my favorite ceratopsids in real life, but seeing as how this game will have six ceratopsids, I'm excluding Taco on purpose since its playstyle is completely different and will probably just be strictly AI anyway. I struggle to see what would make this specific one stand out. Regardless, I like its model, but no concept art no ranking. Tenontosaurus, A tier. Tenonto is a very entertaining herbivore and its design perfectly accentuates its ability to fight. It has four weapons in its arsenal. It has its bite, its kick, tail slam, and finger guns, and it is one of the isle's most recognizable animals and a great addition to the roster. Probably my most played herbivore. I am very confident about this ranking. Therizinosaurus. I really like the way Fairy looks and its proposed playstyle. It seems like one of the only herbivores that will specialize in offense, and that is honestly kind of frightening. It's one of those dinos whose concept alone is enough to make it unique. You don't, you don't need to give it any special abilities or funky gimmicks. It's perfect the way it is. A tier. And last, but definitely not least, Triceratops. I am in love with the complete rework that this thing has received so far. Its animations look goaded, I love the way it runs, and it's poised to be the largest ceratopsid on the roster. You simply cannot have a dinosaur game without including what is objectively the most recognizable dinosaur in history behind Tyrannosaurus. It's going in A tier. And before I continue, uh, I suppose I should take an opportunity to go ahead and rank what I think of the hypo strains, hypo rex, hypo giga, you know, that kind of stuff, uh, because I didn't cover it in my carnivore video. I hate them. I hate all of them. I think hypos are a stupid idea, unless it's going to be some sort of world event that only one person can be at a time. I, I think hypos are, are better off scrapped, if I'm being completely. The those are actual creatures that I would 100% be okay with being omitted from the roster completely. The only reason hypos exist is to satisfy the murder fantasies of whoever came up with them. But yeah, that's pretty much how I feel about them. Sorry again that this video took so long to put out. I had several things going on personally that I had to sort out. I'm currently working on something that I hope you guys will like. It is not IO related, I'll tell you that right now, but I'm hoping that you'll still support. Thanks again for watching my personal IO tier list, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.